Okay. All right. Um, thank you guys again for coming today. Uh, now that you've done the uh, stress scale, um, I'll be using that as an evaluation tool. We'll do that again uh, next week and, and see if what we've done here today has, has made any difference for you guys. So, you know, over the last couple months, as, as we've talked and I've gotten to know some of you all, um, you know, trying to find something that applies to everyone, you know, most everyone I talked with um, said that they experienced quite a bit of stress on their job. Uh, some people, you know, talked about experiencing stress at home, that they bring their, their home stress to work, they take their work stress home. Um, so I thought a good thing for us to do would be to learn how to um, reduce some of that stress. There, there are ways, um, techniques that, that people use to help reduce the amount of stress that they experience and, and how they react to stress. Um, so today we will, uh, we're going to define stress. Uh, you know, what does stress mean? What does it mean to us? Uh, we're going to identify our symptoms. Uh, how do we experience stress? What does it feel like? Um, think we're going to identify our stressors, things that cause us stress. And we're going to uh, look at some strategies to reduce that stress. So what is stress? Um, the dictionary, I actually looked it up for you guys, and the dictionary says that stress is a state resulting from stress, especially one of bodily or mental tension resulting from factors that tend to alter an existent equilibrium. So what does that mean? What does that mean to us? Um, how, how do we feel when we have stress? Um, it's when we feel under pressure or overwhelmed. Uh, sometimes we don't feel in control of, of what's happening around us maybe. Um, we're struggling to cope with something that's happening. How, how do you guys experience stress? What do you think stress is? When we have too much to do in too little time. Okay. Yeah, I think the, um, the pressure to hit production and accuracy goals is strong um, because we're evaluated on that each year. And in the moment of, of picking an item that you have to count out say 100 or 300 pieces it just takes a lot of time and, and you feel you feel like you're, you're wasting time you're losing time and, and you're already behind and that's very very <clears throat> frustrating um to because you know you have to catch up for me it's sort of like an endless loop like when i know i'm behind on something i know that i'm going to do worse on it when i know i'm behind because i get stressed out which is just Yeah, personally, I feel a lot of brain fog, especially from work stress, and then I just kind of shut down. Okay, that makes sense. Um, you know, when, I, when I've talked to people about stress, um, a lot of people will, will say that, oh yeah, yeah, I have a lot of anxiety. Um, and I just thought it was interesting because I think so many people think that stress and anxiety are the same thing. Um, I think anxiety is more of a uh, result of stress. Uh, you know, stress is caused by um, an existing factor. Some, something is causing you to feel stressed. Anxiety is what happens when you don't manage that stress and that stress continues even after the thing that's causing you stress is gone or it's over and, and you still feel that kind of fight or flight response. Um, that, that's where your, the anxiety comes in. Um, so the symptoms that people experience with stress, you know, we all experience stress in different ways. You know, my stress may look and feel totally different from your stress. Um, you can experience it physically, you know, physical symptoms, uh, emotionally, uh, through, your, through your actions or your behaviors or any combination of these. Um, so, you know, what do you guys feel when you get stressed? How does your body feel? How does your mind feel? What are you thinking about when you get stressed? I find it very hard to think at all. Okay, it's kind of kind of shut down. Yeah, yeah. I feel a tension, like um, it, just throughout my whole body. You know, I, I feel my my jaw start to clench a little bit. Like, like I just I don't know why I just do, mm -hmm. and I feel like that I don't. I take shorter breaths. I don't know why. I just feel like I'm. I'm I don't know. I just fighting for air a little bit. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Just don't feel yeah. like I don't feel comfortable. Yeah, well, that's a kind of that's that fight or flight 
you know, your body's telling you that, that there's something wrong, that there's a threat and everything just kind of gets ramped up. You know, you might get heart palpitations. Um, some people get a headache. You know, you're talking about your jaw clenching, that can definitely make your head hurt. Um, some people get angry, you know, they're frustrated because they're stressed and they kind of lash out in anger at people. Um, a little bit more argumentative maybe when we're stressed than, than we would normally be. Um, you know, some people eat when they're stressed. Um, some people don't eat when they're stressed. Um, some people get a little, I think I get forgetful. I get more absent-minded when I'm stressed, I'm, when I'm not able to fully focus on one thing at a time and I've got people coming at me from different directions and everyone needs something, um, I, I get forgetful, you know, I, I have a hard time focusing and doing what I need to do. Um, I'm usually not able to like focus on what is stressing me. So like if I have, if I know that I have to get a lot done, then I won't be able to focus on what I have to get done. And then it makes the stress worse. And then mm -hmm. it just keeps building on each other, like on itself. Yeah. And it's like a never ending. Like kind of like pro you procrastinate when yes. you're stressed. Yes. Yeah. I, I get mad at myself instead of other people when I'm stressed because I feel like if I were to handle the situation differently, you know, I could have had a better outcome. So I'm, I'm mad at myself hmm. for, for not doing better. For not reacting to it better right. or, or maybe creating the situation that you're in. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I also unintentionally lash my own stress and anger out on other people. How you kind of said, like projecting it. Uh -huh. I find that I do that quite often. Yeah, I get irritable. I don't want to talk to anybody. It'll frustrate me when people ask me for things or if they ask me for help on something that they need help with. I just can't, I can't do anything other than stress about what I have to get done. Yeah, I become judgmental very quickly. You know, it's like, really? You know, I'm thinking to myself, really, you can't figure that out? Or, you know, just, I, I yeah. yeah. People... Maybe sometimes we blame, too, you know, when we're stressed because we're, we're, we're feeling distressed. We don't, we don't like that feeling, so we want to lash out and, yeah. and blame other people. You know, if you had done this and if you had done that. And, um, yeah. yeah. Less, less patient, for sure. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um. All right, thing, knowing our stressors, things that cause us stress, you know, you need to be able to, I think sometimes it creeps up on us, you know, we're so used to, to going about our day and doing the things that we do, you know, knowing the things that cause you stress and, and being prepared for that and, and knowing how to handle it and being able to control how you react to it um, is important, you know, being just identifying the things that cause you stress. You know, and those are individual, you know, just like the symptoms, uh, people experience it differently. Um, stressors can be different. You know, what may stress me may not cause you any stress at all. That it might be fine for you. Uh, you know, and you have to be aware of that with other people because, you know, sometimes it's easy to judge and be like, oh, wait, you know, why is she so stressed out? Why is she always freaking out? Well, obviously because she's in a stressful situation. It's causing her stress or, or him, you know, so um, it's, it's a very individual thing. And I think all of us have a different uh, level of, of tolerance for things that can cause us stress. Um, you know, when you look at the things, you know, think about the things that cause you stress on a daily basis, um, whether it's at work, it, it could be at home, it could be the drive to work, the drive home from work. Um, and think about those, you know, are they, are they short or long-term things? You know, are you stressing over something that's that's just gonna last, you know, a, a few minutes. It's a very small part of your day. Or are you stressing over something that's that's really long term that you know could really have an impact? Um, and think about your stress in terms of what can you control and what can you not control. You know how how productive is it to to let your stress level get you know up here over something that is totally out of your control. There, there's nothing you can do about it, but yet, you know, on a daily basis, you're getting all ramped up because here that is again, here's that thing that, and it stresses me out and, and it's completely out of your control. You know, so those are things you, you know, you really have to work at kind of separating from yourself. If it's something you can't control, you know, you have to find a way to separate that from yourself um, and, and let it go. You know, and there are some things that you can't control. There are stressors that you can absolutely control. Just like, you know, we were saying, talking about procrastinating and, and putting things off. You can control that because ultimately, what does procrastinating do? It causes you more stress.
because the longer you procrastinate, the less time you have to get things done. So, you know, those are things that you can work on that, that you can control. You know, if, if there's a person that causes you stress, that triggers you, you know, if you can, limit your interaction with that person. You know, look, look for ways that, that you can go about your job or, or your day and, and not have as much interaction with that person if, if you know they're gonna cause you stress and they're gonna trigger you. Um, you know, you have, to, you have to take care of yourself. You can't depend on other people because other people don't care about your stress level. You know, that's, it's personal and you, you need to take care of yourself. Um, so, but we're gonna learn some techniques to help us, uh, help us when we are in stressful situations that we can't avoid because we can't avoid our jobs. We, we can't always avoid other people. We can't avoid driving home from work and rush hour traffic. Um, so, you know, giving you ways to, to, to manage that and, and to make it less. You know, over time, stress can really have an effect on your health. Um, it's been known to cause digestive issues, heart issues, you know, chronic depression, chronic anxiety, uh, lots of aches and pains, people that carry around a lot of stress. So, you know, the sooner you learn to deal with that, the, uh, the better you're gonna feel. So, some ways that uh, you can manage your stress. Um, has anyone ever heard about mindfulness? About being mindful? Anybody know what that means? Mm -hmm. No. Um, mindfulness, you know, it's, 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 it's a difficult concept for me as well, um, but it's the basic human ability to be fully present in the moment, uh, aware of where we are, what we're doing, not overly reactive or, or overwhelmed with what's going on around us. Um, you know, I, I guess an example is, you know, have you ever driven to work you know, when your mind is in a hundred different places and you're thinking about your day or you're thinking about yesterday and you get to work, I mean, cause this has happened to me. That's why I use it as an example. You get to work and you're like, I don't even remember driving here. I just drove here and I don't even remember driving here. That is the complete opposite of being mindful. That, that is not being in the moment. That's, you're going through the motions, your, your body's doing the things that it's used to doing, but your mind is not in the moment. It's it's somewhere else. It's, it's on yesterday. It's on tomorrow. It's on all the things that you have to accomplish. It's not on that moment. Um, you know, and you can practice mindfulness um, in different ways. You know, there's mindful eating. Uh, you know, they talk about, um, you know, timing your bites and tasting your food and feeling yourself chew your food and swallow and being just mindful of of every, every action that you're doing. Um, and a, a good way to practice mindfulness is through meditation. Um, has anyone ever meditated before? Yes, I have. I practice about five minutes of mindfulness meditation whenever I find out that I'm like very overwhelmed. Good for you. Did, how, does it help? Yeah, it helps. It's um, hard for me to get into. Yeah. I tried doing it in the past where they do like the bells and mm -hmm. that type of stuff in mm -hmm. the background and then slowly work towards complete silence and I found that complete silence helps but yeah. it's hard to get there some days yeah to fully shut down and just let the silent be silent oh yeah yeah good that's awesome I'm glad that you do that um I mean I'll be honest with you I've tried it I've not had a whole lot of success with it um you know since I've been here with you guys it's something I've been you know I've done a lot of research on and I've I've it's something I'm working on, practicing. Um, I, I would like to be able to successfully meditate. Um, so what I would like to do today, you know, besides the meditation, there's uh, deep breathing. Deep breathing is something that's, it's a really quick way to deal with stress in the moment. Uh, when you're right in the middle of a stressful situation, um, the deep breathing can really help you gain control over your stress, your anxiety, uh, and panic that you might feel. Um, so I'd like to practice that and then we can move on to a little bit of the uh, meditation practice if you guys are okay with that. Um, you know, deep breathing, um, you know, you start by sitting down. Let, let's go ahead and practice. Let's all sit. Uncross your legs, feet flat on the floor. Rest your hands on your lap or wherever they're comfortable for you. Um, pay attention to where your body is. Feel your body sitting on the chair. You can feel the back of the chair against your back. Feel your feet on the floor. Um, make a note of how your 
you're breathing, feel yourself breathe. Breathe naturally for a few moments, kind of slow in, slow out through your nose, out your mouth. See how that feels for a minute. Don't fall asleep. Hold your breath for about five seconds after you inhale. And for another five seconds after you exhale. Continue this for a couple of minutes. Five seconds in. Exhale. Five seconds before you take another breath. How that feel? Everybody feel relaxed? Extremely. <laughs> the clock ticking a little bit? Yeah, I, I, that's how I was timing it, was with the yeah, clock. I yeah, I kind of liked it. I kind of liked the, the clock ticking in the background. It kind of gave me something to, to focus on um, to keep my mind from, from wandering. The thing I didn't like was holding my breath after I exhaled. Felt like you were a little, it made me a little panicky feeling. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't mind holding my breath after I had the the, the intake of air, uh -huh. but but you didn't like the and I just stopped. I just I just started let it go and then yeah. really come back in. Yeah, it made me uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, I had realized I didn't notice before, but once I started to fully relax, my jaw had been clenched previously. Mm -hmm. Just sitting here. Yeah, just you know, there's so many physical signs that we're not even aware of th things that we're doing that we don't even we don't feel. Um, and that, that's part of the, the mindfulness, is just being fully aware of your body and, and what's happening in your body um, and in the moment. Um, so, you know, there's, uh, I was reading about a, a progressive muscle relaxation, which is obviously something we're not gonna do here. I think it works better if you're kind of laying on a, like a flat, comfortable surface where you can kind of start at your, your feet and you uh, progressively, you know, you, you squeeze your toes and tense up those muscles and then you let them go, you know, and then, you know, flex your foot up, uh, feel that muscle tension and then let it go and then work your way up and try to focus on every, you know, flex your calves and see how that feels and then let it go. Work your way up through your thighs, your back, your shoulders, your arms, all the way out to your fingers. Um, and that's a really good way to um, help yourself kind of decompress and relax. Like I said, it's not something you could do while you're at work. It's not going to help you much there. But, you know, in the evenings, if you're feeling stressed, it's something good to do before bedtime just to really help your body uh, just relax. Um, so we'll talk about uh, the mindfulness, the meditation. Um, you know, you want to set aside about five, five minutes um, and you tell yourself that you're not, you know, just like we did with the deep breathing, get yourself in a comfortable position, feet flat on the floor, um, somewhere quiet without a lot of distraction. Um, uh, and, you know, tell yourself that you're not going to engage your thoughts during that time. Does anybody know what that means? Like to not, not engage your thoughts. I mean, obviously you can't stop your brain from thinking, um, but what does it mean to not engage your thoughts? To focus on your breathing instead of your thoughts. Mm -hmm. 
you ever try to let scenarios play out in your brain that you're like causing you stress and then thinking about mm -hmm. what, what could cause you stress the next day or what cause you stress that, that day that you're right yeah. right yeah yeah I'd say my my biggest stressors are projecting the worst outcome into the future that's what mm -hmm. that's what wheels are always turning yeah always yeah, yeah. Assuming the worst instead of assuming the best outcome right. in the future. Which right. Is silly, but I, I can't help myself sometimes. <laughs> yeah, for me during meditation, when I kind of go off into space and thinking about other stressors, instead of like being upset or angry at myself because I can't clear my head, I acknowledge that I can't focus mm -hmm. and then take a step back to realize what's pulling me away from it and then bring myself back to kind of clear my head. That's perfect. That's ex yeah, that's exactly how it works. Um, you know, the purpose of meditation is not to concentrate on your breath or achieve, you know, perfectly still, serene, blank mind. Uh, the goal of meditation is to achieve uninterrupted mindfulness. You know, to, to do a five minute period where you are mindful, where you are in this moment, you're not in tomorrow, you're not thinking about yesterday, you, you're in this moment today. Um, you know, and being distracted is normal. It's how our minds work. When you sit down to concentrate on your breath, don't be upset when your mind wanders, you know, from what you're doing. Instead, like you said, observe it. Okay, I was distracted. And then and then go back to it. Um, you know, whenever you're distracted away from your breath, when you're trying to meditate, just switch your attention to the distraction. You know, what? why was I thinking about that? Make, make it a temporary object of your meditation, but only temporary. And then come back to your breath. It's okay to acknowledge it, to know that you were thinking about something else. Just always come back to that breath. Um, just, you can switch your attention, you know, long enough to notice certain things about, like I said, you know, when a thought pops into your head and, and notice that thought. You know, what was that thought? What, how do I feel about that maybe? But then go back to your breath. Uh, don't, you know, it's, it, it shouldn't be a battle. You shouldn't feel like you're battling with yourself or that you failed if, if you're having you know, thoughts while you're trying to meditate. Um, but yeah, like I said, so, you know, you want to set aside about a five minute period of time in a comfortable place. Um, don't engage your thoughts. As your thoughts pop up, just notice them, let them go. As you notice your mind thinking about things, try to let those things go without judging them um, and return your attention to the, just the experience of breathing. Just, just feeling your body, the breaths in, the breaths out. Uh, the point is not to stop having thoughts. Uh, the point of this meditation is to become more aware of your thoughts without automatically engaging them. Uh, don't, don't engage those thoughts. Um, if focusing on your breath doesn't work uh, to bring you into the present moment, you can focus on anything in the present. Uh, sounds, the clock ticking, uh, a picture that you like. You know, I was reading that a lot of people will uh, light a candle and they'll focus on that flame. The flicker of the flame is, is very uh, soothing for people and it kind of gives them something to focus on uh, to keep bringing their, their focus back to whenever they start thinking about something else. Um, does this sound like something that you guys think you would be, you know, be able to do? Do you think it would help you at all? I feel like I could do it on my breaks, on my lunch break. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would probably do that on my lunch break, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you could go sit outside, you know, especially on a day like today when the sun's shining, sit out there in the sun. Um, and just, you know, get out of, out of your environment here that's causing you stress and get some quiet. You know, I noticed a lot of you guys um, on your lunch break uh, leave, you know, people hop in their cars and they take off and, you know, probably spend, you probably spend what, most of your lunch break in your car driving somewhere to get food and, and coming back. You know, pack a lunch, um, sit outside, you know, like I said, when the weather's nice like this, sit out there, decompress a little bit, try to, Try to do your meditation. Um, the sound, you know, there's a lot of trees around here, wooded areas. Um, get outside and enjoy that because that, that can help with your stress levels too. Um, just being outside in nature and the sights and the sounds. Um, but, you know, we all experience periods of high stress um, and this natural response is, it serves us well in the short term. Our, our bodies are designed to feel stress. It's a protective thing. It, it helps us react in situations when we're in danger. But our bodies need time to recover. Prolonged high stress, you know, people that just maintain that high stress level day after day after day uh, can cause high blood pressure, it can weaken your immune system, heart disease, you know, digestive issues, 
headaches, depression, um, learning techniques to manage your stress is, is not just, you know, helpful for your, your production at work. It's, it's helpful for your daily lives. It's helpful for your overall health. Uh, you know, just remember that you can't always control the causes of your stress, but you can control the way you react to those stressors. Um, and being able, like, like we said before, being able to recognize when you're feeling stress, being able to recognize the things that cause you stress, and having a few, you know, weapons that you can use to, to combat that stress will, will help you overall. I noticed on the previous slide you had like it, it listed something about physical activity. Oh yeah, you... I forgot that, didn't I? Let's go back. Yes, physical activity. Sorry guys, I forgot about that one. Uh, physical activity is a great way to reduce your overall stress levels. Uh, getting outside, getting your heart rate up, um, improves your mood. Um, you know, there's a walking trail uh, close by here. Um, I was looking at the map of, of everything before, before I came here with you guys back a couple months ago, and there's actually a walking trail um, that links a lot of this part of your industrial park with um, other parts. Um, you guys might want to check that out. You know, that could be something, because you get, what, a full hour for lunch every day? Um, could be something you could do. I'm not trying to be a smart aleck, but I feel like we get a lot of physical activity here. Yeah. <laughs> in our jobs. Would rather spend your free time yeah. sitting down yeah. and, and I mean, resting. We're walking, and I mean, we're all walking probably six, seven miles or more a day. Right. Uh, lifting, you know, we're all moving all day long. I kind of, kind of like my break to Like the downtime. Chill. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. That, that's a good time to practice your meditation. Yeah. I feel like it. I feel like it is less about you know the physical activity. I mean, it doesn't matter how fast you walk. I think it's more about being in the moment, being you know, like you said, it's outside, it's in nature. That's a good point. So I think I think it's more of an opportunity to take in your environment um, to kind of you know take the mind. I think do implementing it on the weekends or like the days you're not at work would be a better mindset to have because. I mean, your weekend is your time to decompress, and just being physically active makes you feel like better. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I think it's something we could try to incorporate, whether it is only on the weekends or maybe five minutes of mindfulness to start off our day. Or, because mm -hmm. you know, sometimes at lunch, all you want to do is you want to sit and get out your phone. Right. Or, and yeah, everybody wants to stare at their phone and yeah, yeah. Or reply to emails. Or, yeah. Yeah. You know, anything else or take your work home. So maybe before we get home after work, tell ourselves, you know, we're going to take five minutes before we, mm -hmm. even if we do take it home, start at that. Right. Five minutes of that mindfulness where you, you were in the moment. Yeah. Okay. Well, this has been good. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming. Uh, I hope we did something helpful here. Um, I'll be back to see you guys next week. I'm going to bring the, uh, the stress scale that you guys took for me uh, today. We're gonna do that again just one more time just to kind of give me a little tool to evaluate myself and see if, you know, if I've helped you guys at all, um, if I've helped, you know, any improvement in your stress level during the day or at home uh, whenever you think you need it. Um, but I really appreciate it. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.